The name of the course is Historical Perspectives on Science. The heart of the class is a question about what distinguishes scientific knowledge from experience or how experience or a simple observation becomes scientific knowledge. In this image, we have Ptolemy looking at the stars, which is something that everybody does. Or, so everybody takes observations, everybody looks at things. How that observation gets transmitted and translated to a point where it acquires the mantle of authoritative, objective scientific knowledge. This is, at its heart, a, a history class and about different communities and societies over time and, and different individuals within those societies and how their contexts were brought to bear in the ways that they fashioned their own participation in the world. It uses history as a way to, to think about natural and quantitative reasoning in a way that individuals within the sciences tend not to think about their own enterprises. The other thing that this class will do will be to introduce sociological and anthropological and philosophical approaches to science as well. There are certain kinds of misconceptions about science that uh, this, this course will, will help students recognize. One is that it is a straightforward linear progression. There are these um, fits and starts of what appear to be advancement, but also that there are different ways of assessing the value of natural knowledge. I think recognizing that the values that they attach to science emerge from a social context and emerge from a, a broader set of assumptions about what matters as knowledge is important and will help address certain kinds of misconceptions about what sort of knowledge is valuable. The other kind of misconception that I expect to confront in this class is that it's the misconception that states that arguing against the linear progression of science is somehow anti-science. I am not anti-science by any means. Most of the virtually everything that I assign will not by, by people who are anti-science, but they will have a critical kind of attitude towards it. And I think it's important to recognize and to address the misconception that having a critical stance on something entails rejecting it. I hope that students will leave the last lecture with a desire to ask questions about how people believe what they know or why and why people believe what they know and a, sen a better sense of how they might themselves interpret or understand the structures that lead to belief.